Welcome to the Heidi Rue Show podcast. Today, I have Misty Grant and Shannon Evans on with me. They're founders of Nailed It DIY Studio. They started it in 2014, and it is just blowing up. Misty Grant was an education executive for Belk, um, and she always did crafts on the side. She had the side hustle, and so did Shannon Evans, who was an NBC Universal marketing coordinator. So how did they end up owning Nailed It DIY Studio? Well, you'll find out more in the podcast podcast episode. Um, they have multiple locations in the Carolinas. They're soon going to be in Florida, Massachusetts, New Jersey, Indiana, hopefully Georgia maybe. But one of the things that I wanted to tell you that really impacted me from their interview was how their side hustles ended up evolving into this growing business. They even talk about a little bit about how it seemed um, almost organic and easy and I can kind of relate to that with Atlanta VoiceOver Studio, where I'm at right now, um, where my husband and I started. It was something that we never imagined would grow to this point or even grow to areas where, I mean, you know, we're planning for the future. And I, I never thought we would even plan that far for Atlanta VoiceOver Studio. I just thought it was going to be a simple side thing. But... The thing about it is, is that one of the reasons why it made it so much easier is a lot of things that I had done before that had failed. If you've listened to the podcast, then you know that I did a blog for six years called Parties for Pennies, and I think the most I made was $12,000 in one year, but I was working probably three and a half days on it uh, during the week, so it was a huge time commitment for just $12,000. The Modern Post sh pilot show that I tried to pitch to all the big networks, everyone said, great, love it, N not yet for us, <laughs> at least not in this at this time. Um, so both of those things taught me so much through the failure. And, um, I, you know, with Parties for Pennies, I learned how to do an email newsletter. And that's one of the first things that we did at Atlanta VoiceOver Studio. And that has really built our community where we really do have a community that... I think trust us and that we feel like we do have a really good relationship with. And I never would have known that had I not gone through the lessons that I had with Parties for Pennies. So as you're listening, if you do have a side hustle, um, if you have something that you feel like, well, I've tried that, kind of didn't really work, I want you to be encouraged as you listen to this episode and realize that a lot of those things still will teach you a lot, and you have no idea what's around the next bin, that it will be like, whoa, this was so easy and smooth. But a lot of times it's because we failed or because we had, you know, things just didn't work out, but we learned a lot of lessons, and those build um, on each other to create something that is very successful in the future. And if you have something in your mind, if you have something in your gut that you're like, I know I should be doing this, then just start. Just start, because... The thing about it is, is knowing, well, it, you know, I may have several side hustles or I may have several things that don't quite always work out or don't end up working out, then you don't have anything to lose. That's what the girl said later on. It's like, really, what don't, you know, what do we have to lose? Not much. So if you're sitting on the fence on something, I really hope this episode inspires you to get off that fence and to start. If you have a side hustle, I would love to hear about it. So tell me on Facebook or Instagram and link to your side hustle or, you know, send me a message about it. You can always email me, uh, Heidi at HeidiRue.com, and I will share your side hustle on our social media because we want to support each other and learn and grow from one another. So let's go ahead and get started because I know you really want to hear from Misty and Shannon. So let's hear from the owners of Nailed It DIY Studio. So Misty and Shannon, I'm so happy that you're here with me today. Now, I want to know a little bit more of the time leading up to you starting Nailed It DIY Studio. You both kind of had some side hustles. Tell me about those side hustles that you were delving into at that time. <laughs> Um, I can start a little bit of mine. Um, I had a dot dot goose. <laughs> it was just like a little craft. Um, actually, I had all kinds of things. A little craft. I went to festivals uh -huh. in Florida and Georgia and South Carolina and went around making painted wine glasses and ribbon on wood. I made all kinds of little things and went to all these little festivals. And I was a pampered chef. Um, consultant so I yeah. did all these little extra little side hustles on top of my jobs 
Oh my goodness. Yeah. Crazy. We're Crazy hustlers. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's no, there was no stopping. There's there always no... something. Right. And was it, it, was it to make a little extra income or was it kind of just like, this is my fun both. side thing? I think I both. I've mm-hmm. always been really creative. Mm-hmm. There was always that. I always wanted to make something. Even in high school, I was making sweat, sweat outfits and putting puff paint on them and selling them. So oh, I love always, you already, Misty, <laughs> with the puff always, paint. <laughs> uh-huh. Always something that I was selling or that entrepreneurial spirit. Mm-hmm. I think uh-huh. I've always had that, and I was always looking for something else to do. Even when I went to be a stay-at-home mom, it's like I didn't know how to stay at home. Mm-hmm. I had to go find something else to do. Yeah. <laughs> so I think those were kind of my side hustles until nailed it became my side hustle to to for to, to, hu- to, to full hustle <laughs> yeah. full, full, full plus hustle. some more exactly. hustle yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then what about you Shannon I, I think um when you're an entrepreneur there's a certain boil in your blood that never literally never stops mm-hmm. so from the time that I was little watching my parents hustle or my family do that kind of work it was always how can we take this dollar and make two dollars how can mm-hmm. we make this thing turn into more. And it was always that thought process with everything I did. So the minute I became old enough to value what I had and realize what kind of that I had that was special that people would pay for, I would just start doing it in little ways. And then people would say, this is great. This is worth more. And I'd be like, really? (laughs) And then it became like you would fill up with that. That entrepreneur spirit would just be like full bucket. And you were like, okay, all right. They like that for a dollar. I'm going to make $2 now. And it just kept going um and then i was just creating signs it was it all became just a ruler on the wall Mm -hmm. that was literally to measure your children so that if you moved it went with you Mm -hmm. that's where it really all started for me Mm -hmm. it was sitting in my living room making these at night and my husband said let's try a craft sale do one of those sales that's where it turned into that and then there was scrap wood left over from these rulers and I was like, this could be another dollar. <laughs> and he was like, now you're thinking. Right. And it just be, it just kept rolling. And wow. I think once you taste it, you just never stop. If it's in you, mm-hmm. you just keep going. And then by you teaching other people, that's mm-hmm. where Nailed It actually came to be. So tell me about that story. All right. So we really started in the concept of making things and mm-hmm. selling them. And, and exactly what you're saying, people were willing to pay for that product. And one day a lady called me from a church and said, would you mind coming to our church and just sitting down and teaching women how to do what you do? And of course, my first instinct was, well, that's going to take money away from me. I'm not showing anyone how to do this. Mm -hmm. And it was like a split second where I turned and I was like, wait, you know what? That's a genius. That's a great idea. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. So I packed up like this big bucket of wood and it was so different than Mm -hmm. what we do now. But it Mm -hmm. was it was enough because I knew these people would pay $25 $25 a person. Mm-hmm. And I think there was like 50 women. That was a lot. That was yeah. like, I did. Like, I was like, I've made it. I made it. <laughs> like, this is the Mecca. Like, I we made it. The top of the mountain right? Now. Like, Rocky coming up right. the stairs. Like, all right, they're willing to pay. So that's where it all started. I got home that night and I said, honey, I just really liked what just happened. Wow. And so we went online and I, I had bought the website. I had registered through the state all by like three o'clock in the morning. Oh my goodness. I mean, I was like, we're doing this. Like this is, this has to happen. Yeah. And I couldn't sleep. And I just sat up and just kept thinking about it and what needs to happen, what needs to happen. And, and so then how did you and Misty come together as partners? You well, to, I, I mean, took over. I, no. yeah. <laughs> she, Personality. Um, so <laughs> she posted that we were all already like Facebook friends and bought stuff from her and um, she posted, hey, I'm opened up, I got a table in the back of a studio and I was like, oh my God, that's my friend. And so I started sharing it with all my friends. I said, I'm going to be one of her first classes. So I literally came into her first class as I'm sitting there and I'm a trainer by nature and yeah. teacher. So I was watching and I was like, oh, I could totally do this. This is so my thing. Let me have your tools. And so I take the sander from her and she's like, I don't let anybody touch my tools. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, True I'm story. taking it. Yeah. And I'm sander. like literally sanding and working. And then it was love say, it for sand. It really I was love like, if I'm going to let her use my, <laughs> like if this person's going to hold a tool of mine, that's a big deal. It was right. a really big I, deal. She's like, Ugh. I don't have liability. I don't have anything. Like, I was like, Ooh. And I, I think I came back to like two or three classes that same week. And I was texting her by the end of the week. Um, 
other ideas. Like, mm-hmm. hey, what about this? You should do this. What about this project? We could do this. We could do that. Do you have a schedule? Let's work on a schedule. <laughs> Everything I, think that I, I was sitting about. in the middle of the night texting her at two or three in the morning yeah with ideas and she was like Are there's you a common this? theme here like <laughs> when you meet someone that thinks like you and works like you uh-huh. like at three in the morning if mm-hmm. that person is texting you at three in the morning you're like that's my girl that's yeah, yeah. that's who, who I, I want on my with. team yeah mm-hmm. you know so it was Absolutely. there was that line of like okay now I've met someone that wants to do what I'm doing how do I let go of that yeah how do I bring that in and be mm-hmm. okay with it and right away I was like she, this girl will work till four in the morning with me. That's <laughs> perfect. Right. Yes. Because I didn't want someone who was like, oh, this is fun. Like, Great. I, wanted I don't, someone I don't like, think you really wanted someone. I didn't. I, I was like, I how just could I bullied bring... my way in. I, mean, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean she held like, a no, gun to my it was head. Like, and... We've got a schedule. Let's make a schedule. Let's make it. You it know, I'm a very great. scheduled kind of person and yes. not as free flowing. So yeah. it was kind of like, let's do this. Let's do that. And then all of a sudden it was, we had a regular classes. We wow. had re- regular projects, and then stopped. it just it just kept growing. We kept taking over space and taking over space, and it just kept going. Yeah. Well, it I didn't sounds, let her get rid of me. It sounds like, <laughs> and you're like, and I'm still not letting her get rid of me. It's like She's a got me. <laughs> nightmare. Yeah, <laughs> right. I'm the stalker. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes codependent relationships are really good in business. <laughs> yeah. they are. We am. do depend on each other. We do. Oh, sure. <laughs> so it sounds like it was kind of smooth sailing from what you guys say, mm-hmm. but surely you had to encounter some issues throughout, especially in the very beginning. What was like what was one of the biggest things that you guys encountered? Oh. I want to I want to say I mean there's always a lot because mm-hmm. I think we've learned a lot but I don't think we've taken anything that failed or I can even say failed as a failure because we've I taken know everything and encounter. learned. I think our biggest encounter problem that we were faced with was we had the heart and the desire to be what we knew it could be mm-hmm. but we didn't mm-hmm. have the fixtures in place to grab from like it was like we didn't have all the systems and yeah like, we wanted it perfect before we grew it yeah it was so we hard to, to sit back and be like man this could be huge if we just had that one investor if we just had a million bucks if we just mm-hmm. had that one thing and it was always like what is that one thing what is that mm-hmm. one thing and once we realized it was actually inside of us and that it mm-hmm. wasn't something that was tangible it was our drive and mm-hmm. our hearts that we needed to like pump up and be like you know what we don't need anyone right we don't need that mm-hmm. we need to find out what it is that we are really good at and what strengths each of us have get in that lane and just blow it up hmm. and once we did that it was like ah, it all right really okay was. yeah we're there Waiting we can do this probably our biggest and yeah. just yeah not having that we waited longer than we should have absolutely to hmm. grow just that because is of our hard. perfection i think right yeah and just sit back and do that at a, at a pace that worked Mm-hmm. for what we were doing and what we had. Yeah. Absolutely. You guys were one of the first DIY studios to open. I mean, mm-hmm. at, at this time, you didn't have like a, a roadmap either. You weren't you weren't like, we oh, okay, great. This is how you, you do this. You just were like, uh, I don't know how to do this. We're just going to try and figure it out. But then, of course, whenever you start anything, I mean, think about MySpace. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anytime you are kind of one of the first people to do that, there's other people that come in that try to replicate it or, you know, copy it, which is a natural thing for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know even for our own our own voiceover studio, you know, we've talked a lot about competition and how do we, you know, protect what we have, but also be free to not worry about that. You know what I mean? To live in that freedom and instead of fear of who else is coming onto the scene. How did you guys navigate that? I mean, like you said, when we first went out there, there was no, there was nothing to look at and say, hey, those people are doing something that's really cool. Let's see what they've come up with. Let's see how they're doing it. And instead we became that leader. We became that person that people were looking at saying, oh, they're doing something pretty interesting. How do we get in that space? Yeah. And just to think that we were in there and we never asked to be in that space. When mm-hmm. you think about entrepreneurs and these things that people are doing, you never expect that someone's going to come along and be like, okay. And I think that was our own naive. We were just naive. Mm-hmm. I remember, we never imagined. I remember Googling like DIY, DIY and, yeah. and studios and stuff from HGTV would show up. Right. But there was no studios. There was, I mean, I literally was Googling, trying to find something in the country that 
I could not copy, but how are they doing this? How are these people on mm -hmm. Etsy making signs? How are they? And you just didn't see how mm -hmm. it was happening except for stamped buy from China kind right. of thing. Yeah. You weren't you weren't seeing it. Mm -hmm. So we really had to make a lot of mistakes to mm -hmm. find the right systems but I that think really work. In the end, like when you look back at our journey, and, and it really has been five years of just yep. Yep. falling, falling, and falling. And I really think that every fall we made, we came up with something that was like Better. brilliant. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and in those falls, it wasn't so much of like, oh, what are we going to do? It was like, okay, we have to make an answer. We have to come up with a solution, not the problem. Like mm -hmm. we had to think like that. And um, when we started seeing the idea come into other people's hands and really seeing them mold it into basically what we mm -hmm. took so long to figure out. It was like, okay, we have two choices. We can get frustrated and hate them, or we can say, you know what? We've inspired someone. We're going to just keep going on our journey. Mm -hmm. And we always had to say out loud, this our is journey. our journey. Our journey is different. Our journey, journey is, is different. different. We literally would chant that. So it was like <laughs> the mantra that would, the only thing that would get me through was like, that's our, this is our journey. Like everyone's path is going to be their journey. And once you step into that, you lose your focus, you lose your energy, mm -hmm. you start to take all that great energy right. and you give it to them. And right. that's not where that's we want to be. That's not where we are. Yeah. That's not the way we think. No, either. and we're not, we're not the type of people that are going to be like, how can we get them back? We yeah. hate them. It's just, there's going to be people out there that look at an idea and say, that's a good idea. I'm going to do it. Yeah. And what are you going to do? There were mm -hmm. definitely big gulp moments mm -hmm. of, okay, deep breath, okay, but... And she would try to, like, keep me from crawling on the floor in a ball <laughs> and being like, this yep. is over. Mm -hmm. We're never going to get there. I, I think I always said, and I still always say, competition is so good for us. Mm -hmm. It makes you better. Um, and we really have to be flattered that people want it to be what yes. we were doing yeah. or they saw what we were doing and there was a value so there was obviously a it was value. like a stamp of approval for us it too really like we was. were like well if they if there's other people that are saying holy cow that's a great idea mm -hmm. then you know what stamp of approval yes. move on yeah our, we had a lot of mentors we've done mm -hmm. tons of research from franchise world to just business leaders and join groups and that was key. we really talked to a lot of leaders and entrepreneurs mm -hmm. themselves and just, we just learned so much from them and, yeah. and help keep us kind of sane in those moments mm -hmm. of actually if that's what's happening then you're on the right track mm -hmm. keep going keep going yeah. don't stop them yes. validating it it was mm -hmm. a, it was a validation for us yeah and it and still is another thing too that w you guys that they can't take away from you is that resilience that was built up in you guys from like trying to figure it out from falling from always looking for the solution mm -hmm. to every single problem you came up with the roadmap mm -hmm. but they they weren't on that journey and so the resilience that is brought up in you guys in your business is amazing and I think I know for us that's what we you know have to just focus on too is that the inner parts that have been developed mm -hmm. in that journey is something that is so valuable and no one else makes can. your heart bigger mm -hmm. in that in that moment of it and yeah. it's funny because that's exactly what our customers, our friends, our family, everybody says about not just us, but when you walk into our studio, you feel that. Mm -hmm. You feel that heart. You feel the experience. It's it's different than walking in anywhere else. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's different. Yeah. 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 And, and we, we had to create a mission early in, like a mission statement for ourselves mm -hmm. to say, to really sit down and focus and say to ourselves, every time things get tough or every, every time there's a hardship that we f are faced with, if we can just focus on knowing that we're making a difference in people's lives, whether it's understandable for someone or not, we make differences in people's mm -hmm. lives, not only because we create an environment where people are suddenly empowered, empowered mm -hmm. or they have this, this feeling of like, I did it and they're confident. Mm -hmm. And then there's the other side of it where we always say like, that when we get there or when we keep climbing or wherever we're standing, whatever platform that is, whether small or big, we're going to use it for good. Absolutely. We're not going to get up there and say, it's not always about the, it's not about us, about the growth, mm -hmm. even though it is. I mean, obviously sure. we want to grow. It's a business, right? It is, but it's what bigger. a waste it's, it would be. Mm -hmm. Right. It's for two people that we do. We, we care about so many things in this mm -hmm. world. And I think you can get wrapped up in, the world of business and competition and whatever else is going on around you. And when you like stop and think, I have a business, 
People love it. We make people feel good. Yeah. We now franchise, so we're now changing other people's lives mm-hmm. and giving them a, a job and a mission. Whatever, right? a mission. And it's crazy. <laughs> why would you waste that? Crazy. Yeah. Right. Well, and I love what you guys said too that it's more than teaching people how to DIY stuff. You are you're empowering them, like you right. said, um, which yeah, it speaks to so much more of a person's heart and. Um, I really do love that. You mentioned franchising. Yeah. So I want you to talk to me a little bit about that. Um, I mean, are you still accepting people to, for the franchises? Can anyone apply? Like, who are the ideal people? Yeah. All of that stuff. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes, and yes, all the way down. Yes, all we, those. We, we actually, are... like, we talk about it as a family. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because right from the start, we were like, this could be bigger. We've got to get this to people. We've got to give this to other people. If it makes us feel this good, and How do we get it to other people? asking us to franchise from the beginning. And that we were like, what is that word? We knew we wanted to be bigger, but we thought, how do we franchise this? So we mm-hmm. really, everything we did from the beginning, we had to think, how could we make this to work. everybody? How mm-hmm. could you make this system work? This project's not going to work for everybody because we can't buy that project everywhere. You know, so mm-hmm. we kind of had to think big from the beginning, even though we weren't there. We were years away from it. Right. We thought that way. But, but now it's, it's funny, like we say when we meet people that are potential, that'll yeah. say like, oh my gosh, this is my dream job. We're like, okay, well, first things first, you're going to be family. So we need to make sure that we've got an energy, mm-hmm. like that you understand that we have a mission, you have a mission. We need to make sure they come together. Right. And We're it's not just stuff. about like, yep. oh, you want a business? Yeah, give us the money. We'll take you. Right. I mean, we, yeah, we, we go through <laughs> we go through these calls all the mm-hmm. time. and Founders calls. We call them founders calls, but... We first have people go through a process of deciding if they're capable of being, mm-hmm. you know, in a position of really owning a business. Once they get to that point and we feel that they are, then they're brought to us. And we can say, okay, let's talk. Let's see how we kind of mesh and mm-hmm. if you work. And that's so important because if, if we just said to everyone, oh, you want a store? Let's put one on every corner. Let's yeah. put three of them in that city. Let's put them all over. Mm-hmm. Are that's we really not, creating? That's not what we're it's just not us. It's right. not. And the, it's, not it's good funny, the calls aren't about business. Our call with them no. is not about business. It's like We're a asking FaceTime. about their family. We're like in ponytails, sweating, yeah. running around our kids. <laughs> the time it's in a car. Yeah. <laughs> and we like, we're driving somewhere. We don't want them to think like that we're anything no, else. Our nails right. aren't done. Yeah. You know, like we have paint all over us all the time. Yeah. I mean, we really, I mean, we'll put on the lipstick. <laughs> Once in a while. Once in a while. Right. But we, we are down and dirty and we're hustling and we're working the studio too but those calls i i we love never calls. talk about we re- business it's we're like, a little bit about the business we're like, tell us about your kids came from but it's about how do we connect and mm. we're going to be my sister so right. i need to make sure that you can <laughs> like be my sister wives <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know, like, it's okay if we argue but um i need to make sure you're going to yeah. fit in that family and yeah. we know from those calls right away if there's a connection and if it's going to work mm. and we'll hang up and call um Drew and say, all right, this is a winner right here. This mm. is a winner. She's going to fit in great, mm-hmm. or this family's going to fit in great. Yeah, that's so cool. Okay, so as far as DIY goes, are there any, like, specific trends that you're seeing right now or, like, the buzzed about project or anything that we need to know about and <laughs> be in the loop about? I think when it comes to trends, I think the most important thing is not to get up, caught up in a trend mm-hmm. specifically. And that's kind of something that we started to see is that we would say – okay, the trend is blah, blah, blah. And everyone would do it. And then the, the, the next trend would come. And then they would feel like, oh, oh I just did that. No, I'm empty. So we started creating more of a lifestyle mm-hmm. where it was more of, okay, we're going to give you the tools and no pun intended, but we're going to give you. <laughs> well, <laughs> not, not you your it. specific right. tool, Shannon. Not my tools because be nobody touches those. <laughs> um, but we would say like, we're going to give you the tools and we're going to make you think like, a person that is in charge of their style. Mm -hmm. Not so much, you look like a black and white person, you look like a red kitchen person. Like, here's your way of thinking about Mm -hmm. what you're creating in our studio. Okay, so you like this sign that you made or this project that you made. Let's talk about incorporating that into your style. Let's Mm -hmm. talk about where can you put that in your home and what pillows would look great with it. What, how how can you add trend pieces into your classic style? Mm. So it's not about changing the whole entire wall color, changing it to farmhouse if it's not farmhouse. If how can you do that? So right now leather's really hot. So 
how can you add leather without making everything leather? Without getting right. a leather right. couch right. and a leather blanket. You know, <laughs> like, how can I add those? As we it? sit here with a leather with couch leather. and a leather chair. <laughs> that looks great, and by the way, Heidi. <laughs> the use of the pillows really pop. I love it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think it, it's, it's really I, empowered us to tell people, like, not to get caught up in the trends yes. and mm. giving them that freedom. And I think that's what started that, um, our live show on Fridays where they, we just give quick tips mm-hmm. and how to incorporate DIY into your life so it is approachable, it is comfortable for you, and you can do it. It's mm-hmm. not something that, okay, you're going to have to hire someone to do this really great job. No, you can do it in a weekend or you can do it in a couple hours yeah. little known fact like misty and i will not hire anyone if you're gonna come into my home it better be because you're building my home like mm-hmm. i don't want people to feel like they have to always have someone else do it right and i think people make things complicated in their head because they're thinking like i want that whole room just take mm-hmm. little bites at a time mm-hmm. what can you do in that room to start mm-hmm. and not think of it as like an overhaul because that can be spend really, thousands of dollars. Yeah. You can spend a couple hundred dollars. Yeah. And we never came we're, from the no. type of idea. Mm-hmm. Like our husbands were never like, no, whatever you want to spend. It was like, <laughs> okay, you've got a hundred dollars to right. this whole house. <laughs> and we're like, um, and we're like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And we did it. <laughs> I love that too because there's so many, there's other places that you can go to do certain types of projects or whatever. But I mean, honestly, a lot of those projects end up in my closet because I'm like, it was so fun to do, but it's not what I would put in my house, you know? Yeah. Right. So to be able to really customize those projects for people's homes that they would be so proud of, um, you girls are smart. You girls are <laughs> Well, I think good. it's about the experience, creating the experience yes. around the project. And not only are they getting the project, but they're getting the idea again of using mm-hmm. it. And then it becomes, every time they look at it, they're like, I, I feel good. That. I did that. That makes me feel happy. That brings me joy. Yeah. <laughs> because they, I did it. And they leave with a new knowledge, a new learning that mm-hmm. we hear all the time that they went home and they painted a piece of furniture. We get like hate mail. They learned. Right. So now we have like hate mail <laughs> from, from all the husbands and wives that are like, thanks. Now my wife thinks she's <laughs> like. She's already painting furniture in my house. Bob the Builder. My husbands are like, like, I don't know. <laughs> we create a lot of Bob and Bob at the Builders. <laughs> yeah. so. it's quite oh funny. my goodness. That's great. Well, thank you girls so much. I just want to um, wrap this section up with asking you, what do you feel like are your specific keys to success? Because it sounds like you guys have it going on. So First please all, that's share way with us. Too much, yeah. <laughs> way too much credibility. We, no, we it's, cry it's a lot. About, um, <laughs> we, we do. We cry a lot. <laughs> um, I would say our number one for, for me, I know specifically, is who we hire or bring onto our team. Mm-hmm. Our team is amazing, like really crazy amazing. And they are not on our team because we pay them a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they are on our team because... They see the vision. They want to see the cro- growth. They want to be a part of the growth. And, and they, they have a bigger sense of the brand. Mm. And we just have amazing people. And it can't mm. just be us. I mean, it's been us for a really long time. Right. <laughs> and we're just now being able to pull an amazing team together. And it's mm. crazy. And I think that's a big key to our success is knowing where our line stops and we've got to bring somebody else on. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think um, – for me, I'm really emotional. Mm. And I think sometimes centering that energy to really thinking like, okay, you're being guided by God, first of all. And mm-hmm. if you're not putting that in the front of it and you're not trusting mm-hmm. in some of the stuff that gets thrown at you and yeah. saying, okay, there's a reason. Mm-hmm. All right. this He's gone before us. Like, just trust it and go. And like, we, it's so hard for me, but mm-hmm. successful people, I think, just believe mm-hmm. and you never lose that belief. Mm-hmm. And whatever's guiding you. Yes. It's, you, you just can't. It, but you don't you've got to just it. stop and be like, I'm here for a reason, whether it's for myself or that person across from me. Like, mm-hmm. you're here for something, and you just have to believe that and keep going. Yeah. So it's, it's hard. Yeah. It's a really hard thing for me. Well, way to go, girls, because I think what you've done is amazing and what you've created is great. Um, if people want to be able to join you on Facebook every Friday for your tips and be able to follow along, how can they do that? So our Facebook uh, page is Nailed It DIY, and you can actually just tune in 10 a.m. on Fridays, mm-hmm. and uh, we'll be live usually at 9.59, yeah. singing a song, <laughs> getting ready. Too, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. And then from there, you can follow our blog, um, Nailed It Lifestyle. We also have a closed Facebook group, which is Nailed It uh, DIY Crew. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. okay. And that's and kind of a great tips. The tips that we do on our live go in more detail. Yeah. Okay. Um, and we have our amazing designer that is yeah. on there and helps lead that crew and give amazing tips. But don't be afraid too. to come wow. to the Fort Mill area and come see us in an actual studio. And then, of course, we have our studios mm -hmm. all across the country. So. Right. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. Well, thank you guys again so much. Now, listen, if you've enjoyed this and you want to hear more, then you can check out our YouTube channel, The Heidi Rue Show, um, because we're going to talk a little bit more, just, you know, go into a little bit more in depth. So if you want to check that out, you can. Otherwise, all the information will be in the show notes, too. So if you missed the Facebook page and stuff, that'll be linked in there. So have a great couple of weeks, and we'll see you back in a, in a couple. <laughs> I want to know what are some of your personal favorite projects to do Ooh. out of everything that you guys do? Everything we do? Yeah. Ooh. From from the studio or just our projects? <laughs> I mean, because that's two like, different. Like, I'm one... a shiplap girl. Okay. I love some shiplap. Mm -hmm. I, I've got it in my house in four different rooms, and it looks different in every single room. Oh, wow. So okay. it's just a different take on it. Yeah. That's one of my just favorite things. And when it goes out of style, we are going to rip that house apart. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna but be I a think long I think it'll be around stylish for a little while ways. Time. It doesn't. Yeah. It's not trendy. Like, sure. You know, sure. I feel like it's crazy, but we're always doing something crazy. Right now, love, we're doing like, plywood floors. It's yes. Insane. Wow. Yeah. I love taking people's personal things. Uh huh. Like we do this project where we take a picture that of whatever favorite moment they were in, mm -hmm. and it goes on wood. And I love even for my own home, which I don't do enough of right now, but putting up a memory. That doesn't have to be the perfect picture. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to only be your good side. It's like that moment you can look at. So I love when people send us a picture and say, can I put this on wood? And we do. Mm -hmm. And just, I love personal, I love things that tell stories in the home. That's mm -hmm. my style is like, you're going to pick it up and there's going to be a story. Right. It's not just an old cash writing check yeah. writer from 1940. Like, yeah. there's a story. There's a story. Yeah. Maybe it was my grandpa's name. Like, there's just, I love coffee. What is it called? coffee table discussions or something mm -hmm. oh yeah whatever it is where like you pick it up and there's like a discussion yes. about it yeah mm -hmm. love yeah. pieces like that yeah 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 and that's one of the things that i think is really cool is we get a lot of um custom orders and mm -hmm. custom quotes and, and remember that one we did where the grandma died and it was their first thanksgiving mm -hmm. without her yeah oh my god i could cry talking about it so she came in with her grandmother's signature on like a card uh -huh. and she's like i really want to put this somewhere for Thanksgiving at the table. Hmm. And we ended up creating a Lazy Susan with the grandmother's writing that said, love mom, mom, I think it was. And it was her writing and it was on the table. And oh everyone, goodness. she came in after and like, everyone had sat around the table. <laughs> I can't even talk about it. Oh, no. Everyone <laughs> had sat around the table with this um, signature from the grandma. And mm -hmm. yeah, it was it's a piece a of good, wood. It was a really good moment. It, it was a simple thing that turned oh. into for that family a way to bring grandma back wow that so all those we we get that so many so great cool. like custom quotes like that just oh, like the, the girl who was just here, there this week with the crazy beautiful yeah i looked just, at yeah. it i was like dang they have these reasons why right. they want certain quotes or a song lyric because of their mm. wedding or a and, poem that um kelsey's husband's mom yes. read him all the time mm -hmm. and she passed away and he came she came in and said i want to put this poem on wood and then for, for their, their wedding, wedding, it was mm -hmm. hanging on their wall, and I was oh, like, was "Oh my god!" Gift to him, and it was huge. It was a t um, two by five, huge poem. Wow! It and every time, amazing. like he sees that, he's reminded of his mother. So oh, it's all those gosh. like special moments. It's not just about the project, right? You and know? it's not like, just a quote like li faith, love, right. yeah. happiness, <laughs> laugh, like, yeah. whatever. Right? Like yeah. these we are make things... some great designs. Like we uh -huh. really do, but it's almost like what we get from the customers is always is the best. Even, mm -hmm. Yeah, it really is. And like you pull into that emotion of that project, mm -hmm. and it's like. Oh. But you know, I was just thinking as you're telling me all this. As we get these, we're getting these stories because we're art tenders. Is what we call our mm -hmm. staff behind the bar. Yeah. Of bartenders and we get their story just like a bartender would. I love it. you know yeah. we get the story of the project or the quote we or know whatever like it who's is. doing what in all the towns like they wow. will just dish it out yeah they tell us something it's about like, releasing that man creative energy it is and that they just sounds like it's kind of special yeah. yeah that sounds like a reality show <laughs> my goodness gracious well who knows <laughs> right who knows? if anyone's listening i don't know <laughs> So I wanted to talk to you a little bit more since since I have a small business too, mm -hmm. about at the very beginning with even like paying yourself. <laughs> so 
how, <laughs> like, how long did it take you guys to really feel like, okay, this business is really generating good income. Mm-hmm. Like, this is something that either we can leave our jobs or we can feel comfortable. That the drive here. Are you, is the it drive still, here. Say, we decided I, to start paying ourselves. <laughs> so I think I can answer. In the beginning, when yeah. this was a side hustle, when, uh-huh. it, when it wasn't real, it was just like this extra mm-hmm. thing paid herself well like it because there wasn't anything right behind the money it. Back it was in. like yeah I mean we paid ourselves and it was great but then when it became real you know we're gonna open a studio we're mm-hmm. really gonna look at this we didn't touch the money we yeah. were afraid to touch the money even though there was a lot coming in it was more about we've got to put it back in the business put it back right. in the business and that was really big for us and it's only been recent that we're like mm. okay now there's <laughs> this real thing and this real mm structure yeah so of pay yeah so it's you know now it's it's happening and it's crazy (laughs) but I think too like it it makes your heart beat differently when you look at a business and think I didn't take out of it Mm -hmm. I never went in there and took anything out of it it gave to me yeah but I I never took monetary money like it Mm -hmm. wasn't a a, it gave me a lot Mm -hmm. right it filled us up enough Mm To think that it was enough to just keep riding that wave yeah. and our of no income. And allowed it, which is even crazier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Our biggest supporters. Mm-hmm. Woo-woo. And, and then <laughs> giving up, like I had a corporate job and mm-hmm. giving that up. Yeah. Knowing that this was going to be bigger and saying to my husband, like. I promise next uh, year. I'm, like, this is it. I think yeah. this is going to be a thing. <laughs> I think I need to focus 100% of my time on uh-huh. this and not keep traveling. What do you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah. he's like, I think so too. I think you should do it, and that wow. support was kind of. Oh, are you sure? Because that's really going to damper our mm-hmm. lifestyle. But a when bit, you don't but... question it, like when mm-hmm. you know and mm-hmm. you believe in it, mm-hmm. I think you just. I don't remember ever being like, "Oh man, I, I'm gonna. I want to get more. We need to get more money." Like it was more of like, "This is awesome. Yeah, like we're building something, right?" And you don't stop and look at it from that perspective. You mm-hmm. look at it from the perspective of, again, it's filling our buckets. We're happy. Mm-hmm. People are happy, and it's going to be bigger one day. Yes. And you just ride that out. Right, yeah. right. So and I don't think we ever – I always say this. This is something I literally always say is it was never a job. Mm-hmm. It's never like a place I wake up and I have to go to mm-hmm. work or I have to go somewhere. Because if we didn't want to, we didn't have to. It wasn't right. like right. there was no one depending on us. Right. Like we are like, you know what, let's not have classes this week. It's just Let's just take time off. And yeah. it, it wasn't like the pressure of like, okay, we got to wake up. We got 100 people waiting for us, and mm-hmm. we got to go, go, go. Now it is. But, but I, for me, it was yeah. it was like literally like it wasn't a job. Even today, mm-hmm. as hard as we work, even harder for our franchises now. I don't think of it as a job. Like I can't mm-hmm. wait to get there. I can't yeah. wait to start today's work. And we have a list a mile long, but I really can't wait to start on it. Mm-hmm. Like I want to work on it every day, and mm-hmm. it excites me to work. Yeah. On it. So. How do you think other people can discover that for themselves? Like what excites them? Is it just, or, or is the side hustle kind of part of it, trying to figure out maybe what you yeah. want? If you're not happy listening with... to yourself. Mm-hmm. I think people don't listen to themselves. Mm-hmm. I think people question every step they're taking yeah. rather than just listening to what, when or you do something. To everybody else. Like when my, to when my gut burns and I'm doing something, I listen to it. Right. It's with people too. Like mm-hmm. everyone just doesn't stop to like center themselves and just sit in the quiet right. and listen. Are, are you being led to it? Then go. Mm-hmm. what's the worst mm-hmm. that could happen? Mm-hmm. I mean, really, like, what is the worst that could happen? I mean, yeah. I think there's, people have a lot of fear. It's yeah, fear like, of stop. money, fear of losing out, fear of putting um, everything into something, mm-hmm. their time, taking time away from your family. There, yeah. There's a fear in all of it. But if something excites you, I think that's that's the thing you have to go on. If mm-hmm. something gives you that fire and that burn, you got to do it. Yeah. Yeah. you got to take that step and that leap. Yeah. What what do you hope for for the future for Nailed It? Oh, I mean, in addition, <laughs> pull out my whiteboard, Heidi, and I'll tell I you what we see. I love a see. good whiteboard. <laughs> so does this girl. Ooh, I like me some whiteboard. I, I mean, the vision for us is is bigger than um, the experience stopping in the studio. It's mm-hmm. really about us being able to to reach people mm-hmm. in a way that we excite people about. It's not just DIY. It's not mm-hmm. just this little concept of like. Hey, you can do that too. It's creating like this mentality of people mm-hmm. where they're like, I am going to create that lifestyle for myself. I am going to do that in my home. It's like so mm-hmm. much bigger for mm-hmm. us that it's just watching people get excited about something we do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is the coolest thing. 
because hmm. it's hard to get people excited. Yeah. It's growing in many different, it's, I think the franchise is just one bucket, mm -hmm. one shell, yeah. as we call it. It's, um, that's just one piece of where the business is, mm -hmm. but we've got many shells that we're working on and we're yeah. really excited about it. And how to reach so. people. Yeah. yeah. I think so. There's a lot going on in the yeah. background and nailed it. And I think that's... In the back of our heads, mostly, too. Yeah. <laughs> but now it's great because we can put it on the table now. Yeah. And people, like, we have people that help us get it now. Mm -hmm. As before, it was like, hey, I want to do this. Uh, when, and then we'd be like, all right, day. well, we'll stay up till 4 a.m. and do it. Right. <laughs> and now right. it's like, okay, is this reality? Can and people can that. say, like, yes yeah. or no. Mm -hmm. Or that's a great idea. Let's put it in the plan. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. not just this, like willy-nilly like i want this i want this hmm. it's no, let's we can put actually it down. put it in the plan and it. have a game plan for it yeah which is crazy yeah <laughs> well that's awesome well i can't wait to see what you guys do in the future so i'll be watching closely and i really appreciate you guys being here <laughs> Thank again you for having us. Uh, and thanks for staying a little later so we can you that's know talk perfect. some more so <laughs> anyways um thank you guys for joining us and yeah i'll see you in a couple weeks Thank you for having Thank us. You. Thanks so much for watching this episode of the Heidi Roo Show podcast. Don't forget to subscribe so you can catch the next one and make sure you hit that bell. And if you'd like to listen via the podcast platforms, you can find those below. We would love to hear from you. Join in on the conversation on Instagram or Facebook. And I hope this episode encouraged you. Don't stop. Get it. Get it. <laughs> now let's get into it. Okay. Tamara's gonna get dirty yeah. now. <laughs> oh boy, turn yeah. around. Yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah, kidding. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, we're gonna still go into the microphone. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I know she was like, <laughs> okay, she's she's like gonna gonna get this thing. microphone. <laughs> Goodness, we'll staring gracious. at me. I think I'm gonna start We should put eyes on her. Her smiley face. Just looking at me. Carry on, Heidi. Eye contact. Eye contact.